Three, two, one. We're action. live. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. This is Ricardo Sturdivant's Tuesday Feels. We've got Jason Leeser in the house as well as Ricardo. He's working on something that he started with us last week. So thank you, Ricardo, for joining. If you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves and we'll kick off Tuesday Feels. Uh, hey, yeah, let me get in front of the camera here real quick. Um, hey, what's up, guys? I'm Ricardo Sordovant, and thanks for joining us again on Tuesday mornings uh, for another episode of Tuesday Feels. I think we had some technical difficulties today, and I believe we checked. It's episode 44, so nice, even numbers today. Um, thanks for joining us, and thanks for being patient with us. Lauren, thank you for all the help. Jason, you are a lifesaver, my man. Thank you for being here with us today. Admit. Uh, already, already got it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Josh is in the house. Jason, you want to say hello to everybody? Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Leeser. I usually host the Sunday afternoon drawing groups. However, I also jump in whenever technical difficulties are being had because I am pretty good with technology. I know how to talk to the little people inside the magic boxes that make you connect to the interwebs. Um, <laughs> um, there's lots of tiny little people. It's like a little global community inside of these things we call computers. And it's just about how to make those people happy. So yeah, my name is Jason Leeser. I'm a tattoo artist outside of Philadelphia. Um, and I have a background in technology, but yeah, you're watching this. So you probably figured that out already. Um, and thanks for joining us today on Tuesday Feels with Ricardo Sertabon. Joshua Johnson joined us. Hello. Josh, how it goes you're up? my hero. I'm your hero. Yes. Why? What? <laughs> what prompted this? I, I, I mm -hmm. just because, because, yeah, because you're my because, hero of the day, reason. man. Okay. I don't need to have a reason. I, I, I'm feeling uncomfortable now. I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, welcome to you're sanitizing to those world. thoughts away. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to get back to making breakfast, so I'm going to put myself on mute. Um, let me know if you guys need me for anything. I'm going to be listening in the whole time. So, Fuck your own, man. Yeah. Um, how's it going, everybody? Josh, how are you today? I'm doing pretty well, pretty well. How are you? Not too bad. I'm pretty excited to be here this morning. Um, I've been looking forward to continuing some more work on this painting. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of free time these days, which is fine. It's better to be busy than just sitting around twiddling your thumbs and everything like that. You know what I mean? So um, I'm looking forward to working a little bit more on this painting. I hope this is an okay angle with the yeah. camera and stuff like that. Okay, cool. I just ordered some more um, camera software and stuff like that, or, or hardware, I should say, right? Because I'm going to be cool. setting up a, a camera-like station at my in my house. So you guys inspired me. I think it was last week I said one of the things that I needed to work on was my presentation. And I've been implementing that and started researching a little bit more and doing a little bit more investigation into some equipment and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited to uh, get it all set up. It is really exciting. Yeah, totally. And it's always fun to spend some money on some stuff that you feel like you need. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, you know, and I did have my own my own studio for a little while, and um, I'm I exited that recently and started working at a, a shop with some friends of mine that I've I've known for a long time. Um, so I'm going to be setting up this little camera studio here at my in my apartment, and it's a perfect space for it. I think the light here is actually pretty good, and um, natural light that is through these windows behind me. So I'm pretty stoked about it. And getting some things rearranged for it too. But um, other than that, man, um, not too much else. I've been tattooing a whole lot. Uh, how about you, Josh? You've been working again? You said, I think you said you were down and out for a second, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, week before last, I ended up rocking the stay at home dad life. Uh, I am in the process of catching up on appointments that I had to reschedule um and still tattooing yeah <laughs> yeah, so yeah was, that's always fun isn't it yeah it's like oh well i never tattoo on sundays except for this time that i'm tattooing on sundays to catch up because i don't want to make people wait months and... yep 
Yeah, I feel you there, man. Like, it's always like, look, you know what, dude? It's my my problem, my fault. I have to do what I can to get you back in here. No, no worries. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That brings up uh, something that you mentioned earlier, though. You said you've been really busy lately and that it's mm-hmm. better to be busy. I don't know. Do, do you yeah. enjoy feeling rushed and busy? See, that's that's the thing. It's That's interesting that you brought that up, man. I'm glad you asked that. Um, you know, I don't enjoy feeling rushed. Um, I know that for sure. And I don't think a lot of us do. I think a lot of us would rather not deal with anything like that than, than have to face that, that dilemma. You know what I mean? But I do like being busy, but I also like setting my own tempo for things too. You know, there's, there's an appropriate way to kind of handle people and clients and stuff like that. And one of them is being just candid, as candid as you can be right out of the gate and explaining the process because a lot of times people don't understand that you can't just come in and start your, your sleeve that same day that, that you come in for the idea of the tattoo showing, you know, 50 different pictures from Pinterest and everything like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. But they do it on LA Inc. all the time. They do it on LA Inc. all the time. And you that's know completely what? completely different, Jason. Come on. Yeah. That's the magic of TV. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, let's, let's throw in some uh, drama and stuff like that with that, that, that recipe and you got a TV show, man. You know what I mean? Like, might as well have a camera crew around you all the time too. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of doing it if there's no drama? I, I agree with you completely, dude. <laughs> I don't understand that. Who is going to watch you. the show if there's no drama? Yeah, tell me about exactly. it, right? Yeah, so to answer your question, Josh, I do enjoy being busy, but I don't like feeling rushed. And that's part of what we discover um, as artists and working on our own and stuff like that. That's what we discover in this process. Did somebody try to get in or something? Well, I'm not sure, but I heard a noise. I think um, Lauren left or Lauren. Okay, cool. Account. Yeah. Yeah, she's been having some problems with her internet today. So, um, yeah, that's the way it goes. She but must I think- have not had enough whiskey this weekend because. <laughs> We need to drink whiskey on weekends in order to sacrifice to the internet gods. Whiskey weekends, huh? Mm-hmm. Whiskey weekends. I think I can get behind that. You know, I haven't drank uh, for today's 53 days. I'm on this Bravo. 75 hard. Yeah, thank you. I'm on this 75 hard challenge, and it's it's been amazing. It's awesome. It's all by choice for health stuff, you know? It's great. Oh, have you guys ever used this? Um it's this is a an acrylics an acrylic medium it's called liquid text professional it's a, it's a slow dry it's a fluid medium mm. yeah so i'm going to start using this for some of the glazing technique i do have a glazing medium here but this has a pretty this ends up having a, like a really high sheen on it so i think i'm going to use this at the very end and like just glaze the entire the entire um, painting uh, I usually use this uh, as the as a mixing medium instead of water, um, and it seems to do pretty well. And it actually gives me the feel of oil painting, to be honest with you. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check this out and you want to do some quick paintings and stuff like that, um, acrylic is a really good way to go about it. And I've really been implementing like uh, oil painting techniques into it, where I'll go in and I'll lay a base tone and I'll start using this medium in order to get those other hues and, and ranges of value and stuff like that into the painting as far as like lighting effects and backgrounds and um, kind of, you know, pushing the image uh, more into a foreground versus a background kind of thing. Um, and it works out pretty well. If you guys get a chance, check it out. Can you see it? Yeah. What did okay, you say cool. it was called again? Uh, it's This one is Liquid Tux Professional. Uh, I, got, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, and it's the slow dry medium. It has a little letter F here for fluid medium, I believe. Um, so I've I've always just used uh, acrylic matte medium as like a matte glazing medium, and that tends uh-huh. to work well. But I wonder if you combine the acrylic matte medium with the slow dry, if yeah. that would give you that that same kind of like oil medium feel. And, and I agree. I, I think that's awesome. But like what I found with with the um, the glazing mediums is that it ends up being it, it affects the the um, the overall sheen on the painting. 
And True. I think no matter how many layers you end up putting on the painting, if you have that that glazing medium down first, and just like let's say let's we did it on the lips and the eyes, I think what happens is the paint takes on a different texture versus the rest of the paint the paint around it. You know what I mean? So if you're looking for that effect, I think that's an intentional way of accomplishing a, a goal, like as far as an effect goes. But I think for this purpose, especially for like the size of it, it's not very very big painting. You know what I mean? Um, I'm going to try using this slow dry throughout the entire process first and then apply this glazing medium and see how it, how it affects it. Um, this is a good reason to have people that have used this product before and, and give you some pointers and stuff like that, but I haven't. So I'm going to experiment with it as much as possible and on paintings that I'm trying to accomplish too. So why not, right? Why Kyle not? Olson in the YouTube says, morning guys. Good morning, Kyle. Where are you beaming in from? Let us know. Are you guys working on any projects or anything like that? I, I had, I didn't make the uh, Monday night class last night. It's the first time in a while I haven't made it. Did uh, Kyle, did you get to go? I was there. Um, I was hosting it, but my connection was very out of control because I'm in a hotel room. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It um, seems I'm like it's the, on that right now. Okay, what was the um what was the class about? What was the the uh it was um doing some cardinals and some cherry blossoms and kind of whatever design you felt as long as okay. you have those two. Is it a, what what is the goal? Is it about line work? Is it about shading? Uh it was mostly um, about like uh, kind of setup and then technical questions as well. Okay, cool. How to be like most efficient with your time and drawing beforehand. Nice. You know that that's that's cool, man. I was um, actually thinking about that a lot today. Uh, process. You know what I mean? I think process has a lot to do with everything. I've been going through, and I've, like I said, I've been setting up at my house, and I've been having to kind of like re uh, arrange some furniture and stuff like that, and get some things moved around to kind of uh, make this happen which i am enjoying so much like normally i think at some point in time i could have been pretty stressed out about the idea of it M trying to make it as perfect as possible um uh right away right out of the gate you know what i mean but i'm enjoying the process of moving things around in my apartment and stuff like that and i'm enjoying the process of putting it in its own space and then finding out okay i don't think that's going to work as well as i thought it would and I think, I think that we do that a lot. You know what I mean? I think that's part of the, the dilemmas we have as artists sometimes is we um, are so focused on this overall goal that we forget that there's a process to attaining that goal to, to the, the finish line, so to speak, you know? And I think that it's, it's really easy to do, especially if we're sitting there and giving ourselves this negative self-talk kind of thing that I know a lot of us as artists do, a lot of us as human beings do. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of chatter in our brains sometimes that will keep us from even starting something or even trying to attempt it. I can't do that. The idea of that sounds like it's daunting and I don't even want to try it. You know what I mean? Like how many things that we've missed out over our, over the period of our life just by saying those, those couple of phrases to ourselves period like Jen that's just the tip of the iceberg you know um and I've been thinking about that a lot this last week and it's been pretty awesome for me uh to realize that there's a there's a process to everything that we can enjoy uh instead of getting so stressed out over it to kind of like sit back and just enjoy <laughs> and not you know there's all this positive talk and stuff all over the internet and these woke emotions and all this crap like that you know what I mean that's great you know what I mean? I think it's awesome for us to try to feel positive on a daily basis, but sometimes it just doesn't work, man. Sometimes it just, we are just in a shitty mood or we are just in that funk, you know what I mean? Or we're scared and it's, we, we try to be positive instead of being scared. And so it's like, why, why can't we just give into that emotion of that, of that moment, that pro that part of the process of, of attaining that goal that we're looking for, you know, I mean, well, I, I think, think it's, I think it's important to acknowledge that and recognize mm -hmm. that that is how you're feeling. Yeah. 
but also to acknowledge the fact that that too will change. Yeah. yeah. You know, there, you will have good days. You will have bad days. That's a given. Right. Yeah. The question is, are you going to acknowledge the fact that that's going to change too? And that, you know, maybe you're having a great day today. Awesome. Yeah. That doesn't mean tomorrow is going to be a great day. And on the opposite exactly. side of the coin, just because you're having a crap day doesn't mean that tomorrow is going to be a crap day either. Yeah, dude, that's exactly it. You nailed it, Jason. That's exactly it. It can't what I'm rain about. every day, man. It can't. Yeah, it can't. It can't rain every day, and it's not going to be sunshine and, and rainbows all the time either. You're not always right. going to feel. You're not always going to feel amazing. You're not always going to have uh, that person that makes you feel like everything's okay around you all the time. You know what I mean? Like it's there's or that painting that you nailed and you're just like, yes, dude, this is so good. And then the next one you do, you're like, what the hell just happened? You know what I mean? Like, I, I thought I knew how to do this and I don't. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. So use dude. that as motivation to work harder. That's exactly what I'm saying. And not necessarily, yes, harder for sure. Harder for sure. But I think that, I think what I'm trying to say though, is that like sometimes no matter what the effort might be, it's still going to just be what it is. You know what I mean? Yep. And sometimes, sometimes we have to just accept that fact, man. And like, that's part of my, that's been part of my process lately. And it's been pretty amazing uh, to see a transformation in myself as far as like being able to sit down with something that has caused me so much frustration before and how I've approached it in the past, which was just like that amount of frustration, that energy has been so frustrating and like, it, it's just a negative impact on everything that I that I implement, like anything that I touch, like paintings, drawings, or like my involvement with my, some of my clientele or something like that. Like I can have a short temper one day or something like that. Like, I don't want to be like that anymore, man. I don't, I don't. And it's not good. It's not good for me. It's not good for anybody around me. You know what I mean? And especially like loved ones, like it's hard for us to kind of separate that sometimes with the people that are close to us. Even like it's much easier for us to almost take it out on them even because it's like a comfortable area, you know what I mean? And it's not okay, dude. We have to own up to our own our own emotions, our own reality. And sometimes that's all it is, is just accepting the fact that it's just part of the process of that day. And that day sucks. And that's all there is to it. And it's okay. You don't have to be all positive all the time. You know, I hope you don't mind, Jason. I'd like to use that painting that you did as an example. If you could walk us through that, you know what I mean? Like how you were on, on the right path with everything on that painting with the eyeball and the, and the, and the knife. Oh, and that. oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so things were going great. I mean, there were a couple of spots that, you know, I thought I could do better with, but, you know, overall, I thought I was doing really well with it. Great. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, and then I went through and it was the final step in the process for what I do. And it, which is always to do like a layer of light matte clear coat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, and, you know, I've done it on plenty of things before. Awesome. Easy enough. Went through. I don't know what happened if I just held the can too close to the piece, if I just held it too long in one spot. It was also three in the morning when I was doing this. So that might have been why. <laughs> Tired but I ended eyes. up putting on too much matte clear coat. And if you use too much matte clear coat, it fogs the whole thing up. And by the time I realized that I couldn't really wipe any of it away and I tried and I took off some of the paint. So it was like, okay, this is my opportunity to go back through, to do it again, to work on those spots that I know I could have done better. And to push myself a little bit harder in certain areas to get more depth, more dimension, more focus, uh, more detail, even though the painting is pretty small to begin with. And I even got like some of the little tiny veins in the eyes. That was an absolute nightmare, by the way. Do not recommend. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. Trying to get tiny little veins and eyeballs in an already small painting, you're going to drive yourself nuts. Um, mm -hmm. But it gets to the point where it's like, I'm going to use this as a positive event. This is life telling me that I can, I know I can do better and I need to do better. And this is my opportunity to do better. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, we do have a couple of comments in the YouTube. Um, Kyle Olson says, good old Idaho is where he's beaming in from. 
Nice. Uh, Joseph Hamilton says, good morning, folks. Man, had to jump from reinventing to YouTube. Uh, and then he goes on to say, so the slow dry medium is great. I paint in oil, but mediums are super important in both. Varnishing oh, yeah. needs to be done in layers. Yes. Yes. So that's exactly what we were talking about then. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, that advice, man. That's exactly it. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I try to go to the, to the, um, the museums, the art museum up in Chicago as often as I can. It, it isn't too, too often to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I like going there and I like staring at these giant paintings from these people that have been done for a couple of centuries. And like, you look at the paintings up close, as close as you can. And you can see different areas, especially like highlighted areas, the nose and eyes and things like that. Things where you want, you really want the viewer to be attracted to, you know, and there's a much different finish on those eyes and nose and there those focal points than there is over the entire painting. You can still see the brush strokes and everything like that. And it's great, which I, um, I love brush strokes. It's part of the reason that I use those, such broad brushes and stuff like that and just kind of like push the paint around i don't i'm not trying not to blend as much as possible i'm just trying to let the painting speak through it the, the strokes but um uh to that point that you're talking about um the glazing yes i can see that and i think that it is part of the process and things like that so i this one i will go through and start using this other glazing medium for these areas here that i'm trying to bring the eye, viewer's eye to so thank you for that input Appreciate that very much. Yeah, yeah, man, Jason, that's cool. Thank you for sharing that with us, man. It's um, I've done it myself on a few different paintings. You know what I mean? And um, I keep I keep going back to like I relate. I'm starting to relate more and more of my life into this influence from painting and tattooing, and well, then applying it, it to, to daily life. You know. So it comes back to a principle that I I picked up right after I graduated in art school um, that was actually taught to me by a friend of mine named Dennis, who also went to fine art school. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, you know, even though the fact that the art schools that we both went to were very, very different and taught us very, very different things, uh, where mine was more focused on like materials and, um, you know, painting structures and bracing your canvases correctly and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. His was more like, you take the brush, you hold the brush like this and you get this kind of an effect, right? So his was yeah. very much more technique oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, mine was more like, what is art, right? Yeah. Mine was very much more conceptual, but uh -huh. he's like, one thing that gets drilled into our heads when I was in school was learn by doing. Yeah. You don't do it right. Okay, go ahead, do it again. Yeah. Keep doing it until you get it right. Get that muscle memory down, get that flow down, get that precision down, get that technique down. Because that's ultimately what you're doing with every painting is you're working on your technique. Yeah. You know, brush pressure, brush control. Brush control is a huge one. Getting yeah. those bristles to go and be exactly where you want them to be. To get exactly the look or effect that you want it to have. Mm -hmm. That is brush control. And that is what you get when you become a master painter until you get to that level, right? I mean, look at Van Gogh, look at any of the impressionist artists, um, Edward Munch, anyone from that era that's trying to capture the impression of that moment and how yeah. precise those brush strokes had to be in order to put that yellow light exactly where it needed to fall using right. just a couple of brush strokes, right? That's yeah, brush know, control. I so agree, that's man. essentially what we're doing with every painting that we do. Mm -hmm. You're creating, you, and the, world, the reason I say that is because like we create this image that we convince a viewer to, to perceive as real, you know what I mean? And some of the tattoos that we're doing too, like some of the realistic tattoos and things like that, like some of the technique we have to apply in order to convince the viewer that this is exactly what it is you're looking at. And it's impressive to me. It's amazing to me that that's what we do. You know what I mean? And I think that we take it for granted sometimes because we do it so often, but, you know, it's like an author writing a story. And I don't know how many of you guys read read books and everything like that, but there's definitely some authors that you can read. And the books that I enjoy are the ones that I get, I, can, I feel like I can get out of my own head 
and I'm not reading in, in my voice. I'm reading in this other person's like perspective. You know what I mean? And it's always so much fun to be able to do that. And I think that's what it is that we can do. You know what I mean? We can accomplish that with our artwork. And like that makes me start thinking about all these different little rabbit holes. Like, well, if that's the case, like if we're convincing these people that this is, if you can reach out and hold it and feel the contours on the face and everything like that. Then, what is it, this reality that we live in? If we can create that in a two-dimensional two image and we should be able to, in that theory, create our own world in, into whatever shape and form we want it to be. Well, you know? I think that, I think it also comes down to what is the intention behind what you're doing? Yeah. If you're yeah. trying to convey an right. abstract concept, right. right, then it doesn't matter if you're drawing in two dimensions or three dimensions. It doesn't matter if you're, gluing two canvases together and calling that art, right? Yeah. Um, you or know, you maybe you're that. taking some of your beard trimmings and gluing that to the canvas to give it a certain look. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm just saying, people have probably done it. But um, I think it all comes down to your intention, right? A lot of the stuff I do is a lot more graphically based where I'm not necessarily trying to create a three-dimensional volume in the mm -hmm. things that I paint. You know, and that may be true for a lot of other people that work in a lot more of like a graphic style. Okay. Um, look at neo-traditional tattooing, look at traditional Americana tattooing, uh, look, look at a lot of the Polynesian stuff. I mean, anything more graphically based. And yeah, it's nice to have some dimension in there, but we're not necessarily trying to go through and create that, that three dimension where you can touch something but know that it's drawn on a flat surface you know what i'm saying yeah i do so i think I a do. lot of it kind of depends on the intention there and what kind of look you're going for I, I can agree to that but let's say for argument's sake okay that one way or another though dude that you're you're creating an image out of something that wasn't there except for you're using your imagination to do it and you're sure. also showing showing even if it is graphic even if it, if it is flatter there's not a whole lot of like depth or whatever the heck it is that makes these things. Well, I guess I should say depth and structure and form and stuff like that, light source, ambient inclusion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Q value, blah, 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 blah. Even if that's not the case and that's not included in the graphic image that you made, you're still taking something that is a blank sheet of paper or canvas or, or skin and you're creating this image for somebody upon the request, sometimes by implements that they've, they've given you and, and certain parameters that you're allowed to work in because of the client, you know what I mean? Um, either way, you're still making an image and they can still see it. You know, you've created this story, you've created this dialogue That's for very them. True. When other, you know what I mean? So it's still the same thing in my, in my opinion. Um, um, and so, go Joseph ahead. Hamilton, <clears throat> in the YouTube did say, Ricardo, could you show viewers the viscosity of your paint? I assume you're glazing and uh, finding the balance of milk and water is difficult. Yeah, um, yeah, I can show you. Mine is a pretty big mess. So don't freak out when you see it. And there's a little bit of rhyme and reason to it. So here's, here's my palette that I'm using right now. I don't know if you can see this glaze that's dripping down right here. Um, I kind of put it in a corner. I have these two different, these three different tones right here that I'm mixing to make these other like yellowish greens and olives and everything like that. I have some reds and the warms separated from the cools, but I have a little bit of the same cool to bridge those, those hots, those warms into back into the cools and vice versa. Um, and then I have my blacks and my darks to bridge both of those together, which is the whole point of this picture is what I'm trying to do is show like a smooth transition between warm and cool. Um, and then be able to have some, some uh, light source behind it. So like to answer your question, there's not a lot of water that I'm using whenever I'm doing this, this um, blending technique. I'm just using the medium almost straight with the, uh, the pigment out of the bottle, out of the acrylic bottle. And it's about, if I had to guess on an, on a percentage, I would say it's probably 25% glaze and then 75% acrylic that I'm mixing on, on the palette. And then I'll go through and if I need to just use the straight glaze, the straight blending medium, I'm sorry, not glaze, blending medium. Uh, and I'll apply that to the canvas to kind of smooth it all out. 
But like I said before, I like it real chunky. I like it real thick. Here, let me pull this up a little bit closer. So you can still see all the little brush strokes and everything like that. Very um, nice. Thank you. There's a lot of areas that are not refined yet, and that's okay with me. Um, I'll go through and I'll add some more details to so like the earring and the headband and stuff like that. And I'll start messing around with some of the background. But even here, you can see how that the medium, the slow dry medium, believe it or not, I don't, I didn't go through and prime this canvas. Um, I bought it as described as primed. Uh, I would always suggest to go ahead and prime these even after you buy them and it says primed on them because they don't do a very good job of it. Like the, this painting, you can still see a lot of the thread and stuff through the, some of the paint. I, I don't know if you can, if it's transferring over through the, the video or not here. You can still see some of the thread coming through and that's okay with me, it doesn't matter, but it just makes a little bit more of a struggle for you to get the paint onto the canvas is all. Um, the prime is something that you really wanna, you know, get get on there. I know a lot of artists, um, Crayola, for example, will, will prime and sand and prime and sand. And I think there's like a five step process to that sometimes. Um, and he works with acrylics too. Uh, and I think what that does is it makes the uh, canvas very smooth and you can kind of blend and do a lot of drying techniques in the process of applying the paint and layering in certain areas to be able to accomplish a bigger painting a little bit faster and more efficiently. And I shouldn't even say that word faster. I shouldn't use that word faster. I should just say efficient um, because it's like whenever you see a tattoo artist tattoo large tattoos in a pretty a uh, short amount of time where you would do it and or some of the people that are a little less experienced would do it and it takes them double the time that it did a person that's been tattooing for 20 plus 30 plus years you know what I mean um, I think it's just that um, muscle memory and, and eye hand coordination that has implemented that 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 expedient process right so yeah I hope that answers your question I was long-winded wasn't it Jeez. yeah Allie, that's gorgeous. See what she's got. Oh, thanks. I'm going to spotlight you hey, for look that. One. All right. Yeah, killer. That's yeah, awesome. so this is going along with last night's uh, instruction, like Kyle's doing. And, um, I, you know, I, I actually had two of them that I was playing between. Uh, mm -hmm figure out how to do this okay this other one is very very graphic like we were saying oh yeah <laughs> just something different <laughs> that's fun yeah i, See, I you know imagine I don't know that on the skin i know it's that, scary right that would be amazing yeah that'd be pretty awesome actually look at how would, bold those lines would be yeah dude Lots and lots of straight lines. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, but almost you'd like, have to. You would have to get in there with like a nine mag and almost yeah. use like a nine mag to pull those big lines. Oh yeah, yeah. or like oh, a yeah. big fat fourteen round shader or something like that. Yeah, I think even if you were trying to go for lines that big, I don't know if I would use a fourteen round shader. I think I would go straight to a mag. Well, if you wiggle, wiggle, you know. Well, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know a guy that outlines with a 25 mag, so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, I also, Ricardo, uh, so mm -hmm. something else I was working on today. I've got a cover-up coming up. All right. The original tattoo that they have here. Uh oh okay. Yeah, and That's I've just got a, it's on her back. Um, mm -hmm. about four inches below her um, shoulder blade area. So I've got a back here just as a, you know, kind of so I can see what I'm doing here. So okay. she wanted a bird skull, which is hilarious to me that that's what you're working on. And yeah. um, so I decided to do this kind of effect here. Oh, yeah. So we've got really saturated colors. 
She wanted the bird skull with some wings and some roses, very kind of symmetrical look. Um, can, you, can you drop the can opacity you, back down? That's exactly yeah. what I was just about, about to halfway. Ask, yeah. 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 Y'all okay. say when? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Right there. Yeah. So this is the only spot that I think is going to be a real trouble spot. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't want to shade the skull in per se with color. I'd rather it skin tone to leave that, you know, visual less dense there. But uh, I'm thinking just some gray shading in it to kind of like actual, like actual opaques, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say opaques are going to be helpful for that. I, I like I like what you're doing with the roses at the bottom. I think that'll work out pretty well too, uh, especially with I think if this if this tattoo was any bolder and any any more well done, then you'd have a bigger issue with the design that you're using to yeah. cover it up. But but I think with what you're doing and what you are covering up right now, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue at all. Um, yeah. I think I think the only thing I'm thinking of is like. And maybe you guys can add or like add to this, but do the wings seem like they might be might want to be a little bit larger in width, or is that just me? So I, she's she's before if I can just she wanted to stay relatively the same size, so you know mm -hmm. that's one of those yeah I'm struggling with. So, but I'm trying to talk her into going larger. But that was one of the thoughts I had too is actually to bring those out a little further. Is that I what think, you're saying? I think that they could. Hmm. You could probably make the roses just like five or ten percent smaller, so that way the wings seem a bit bigger. Yeah, I think the top the top roses, especially not covering anything up, I think the top roses could be a little bit smaller. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is because I think that you're using everything to cover it up, and that's great, and that makes sense. But I think the top roses could be a little bit try making this the top roses just a little bit smaller first and see what you think about it okay yeah i like i think that'll give it a good arc to where yeah it exactly squarish now yeah right right yeah i think that's what it is there's something off about the flow for sure but i think with what you're doing i think the teals and stuff like that will definitely do a pretty good job of covering up what is already there like that line work is so it's so sketchy and it's so light, the original tattoo. So you'll, you'll have no problem covering that stuff up, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was just sad. <laughs> yeah, it happens. You know what I mean? It Believe does. me, I have some tattoos myself where I'm like, oh, what was I thinking? I completely yeah, cool. understand. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate yeah. the, uh, the talk, guys. Yep. Yeah, no um, problem. It's what we're here for. Yeah, it's very cool. And, uh, Josh, I'm going to spotlight you. Let's take a look at what you're working on. Yeah. Oh, cool, man. Nice. Very nice. I like the anatomy. The anatomy is pretty spot on, dude. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That looks awesome, Josh. Yeah. Um, where, are you, where are you going with this so far? Like, what's going on? Was this a project or something, or...? I don't know. This is uh, this is an upcoming appointment that I'm drawing for. Um, mm -hmm. She wanted a very neo trad breastfeeding tattoo. And I was like, well, that's exciting. At least it's not the same single line breastfeeding tattoo design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. So, um, hands hands are going to be the biggest challenge, I think. Um, not happy with the flow of the hair that I sketched out here. So I'll figure something else out there. Um, I, I like the style of the, of the hair. I think if you were to kind of do it opposite down at the bottom curl, not not the second curl that you just highlighted, but the first one up by the clavicle. Mm -hmm. I think if, if you were to have it where it kind of overlapped off of the top of the shoulder, you know, the roundness from the back over to the clavicle area. I think if you were to have it like uh, in relatable space as far as the gravity of it you know the way that it would fall over the shoulder yeah. like that I think that would be yeah, a little so, bit cooler to see so I yeah exactly, exactly. Like that. yeah you got it I would also yeah, balance I be... it out with a little even even if it's just like one or two little wispy lines coming out from the other side of the head yeah yeah I was 
I was thinking, well, I need to frame it with something as well. So yeah. uh, a good frame here, uh, channel my yeah. inner Muka. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the man himself. Something, something here, probably leafery. Leafery is always good with, with you know, dress. Yeah, especially something like with this subject matter, you know, you have the whole nature thing. You know what yep. I mean? The, nat the natural element. I think that'd be nice to see something like that. And it, it almost, you know, the MUCA thing, I, I love it. I mean, I always implement it into like, even if it's not straight MUCA, like I always try to implement that flow and that feel into almost everything that I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think it's really cool to be able to almost pull from some of the religious kind of imagery you know what i mean the way it would highlight around the baby the baby's head and the mom's head like kind of yeah imbalance yeah exactly something kind of like that yeah something along those lines for sure yeah um, i mean it is a, a holy kind of moment you know yeah it's cool thank you now, are you gonna do a black and gray or color or uh she has changed her mind several times so oh, uh, <laughs> that's awesome we'll see we'll see we'll see when she uh, shows you know that's always tricky that's that's almost to that point where it's like an unspoken thing where the client almost wants the guidance you know what i mean like yeah. if it was up to if it was up to you how would you do it would you do it in color or would you do it in black and gray like where's it going well, as long as it's got a strong value pattern i'm happy either way um yeah okay that makes so sense i'll 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 plan for color. Okay. But do it black and gray. If if she wants color, it'll be easy enough to add. Unless mm -hmm. she's like, oh, I want her to be blonde. I'm like, well, I already put black in there. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is gonna look black and gold now. Yeah. Cool. Where? What part of the body is it going on? I'm sorry. I don't know if I. <sighs> Original plan was thigh. Now it's going to be. Forearm. Oh, okay. Okay. A little wow, bit of a size, size difference there. A little yeah. bit. A little bit. Big time. Yeah. And the taper and everything too, right? Like with yeah. the outside of the thigh, you can almost do almost a straight right rectangle sometimes even. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. That would have that would have been convenient. So now I really have to push in here. Um, yeah. I mean, I like it so far, dude. The baby is spot on, man. Like, I keep looking at that form, dude. It's great. The, like, uh, the proportions and it looked awesome. The face, I am going. Like, it's just a hint of a face here, but I'm going to end up uh, redrawing that probably 20 times. Because uh -huh. baby face, you know. Yeah. yeah. Too yeah. many lines I, and it's I would true. say I would say keep, keep the baby yeah. face minimal. Yeah. really have the emphasis on her face you know mm -hmm. maybe maybe even have her angle her head down a little bit more towards the infant so that that way it really looks like she's looking at the baby as it's feeding mm -hmm. you know because right now as you follow the direction of the eyes and where the eye yeah. is looking it's looking like, like right at the top of the head yeah. yep so I think by adjusting that a little bit, it's also going to give it a little bit more of a curve to the top of the design. Yeah, that's true. Okay. That's really, that curve alone, if you adjust the angle of the head, is really going to help bring your eye around a little bit more. Awesome. I really like that soft expression you have on her face too, Josh. It's Thank like, you. that's one of those, as, as a mom who's been there, done that, um, that's one of those moments, like, like Ricardo said, it's kind of a holy moment, like a magical thing, but that yeah. soft expression will speak volumes in the actual tattoo for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. I dig it. I think it's, it's, I think it's, yeah. Yes, sir. I'd also be careful of the corner of the mouth. You don't want it to look too much like she's frowning. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. that, that might not give it the best connotation there. <laughs> might might not be the best uh the best i there guess i'll do it i guess there I'll you do go this, huh? yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah Appreciate all you need is that little bit of an accent line or maybe just curl the tip up a little bit as you're sweeping it out at the end yeah. so it's, it's, 
it's just gonna be a <laughs> yep yep you know yeah oh uh, thank you all yeah man that's great dude thanks for sharing with us i'm actually gonna pop out uh or grab my ipad real quick and pop in on my ipad so uh that way okay. i can show you guys something i'm working on for today get some last minute reviews and critiques oh, great man thank you About the noise, no laughing. Sure. No. no laughing. I'm gonna try not to. Uh, you might. I'm trying to come in. Yeah, that's uh, Jason. Jason, side side, yeah. Jason, you get bonus points if it's a bird cell. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I'm going to share screen. Let me just make sure that's queued up. Screen. So I'm working on this as a lower arm half sleeve today, lower left arm. And it's going to be connecting oh, wow. to a whole bunch of other stuff uh, that they already have at the top of their arm. So wow, that's 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 in there. That's all that's all in there. How big is it gonna be? Uh, wrist to just above the elbow. Okay. So right where the, the corner of the Nautilus is, uh, let me create a new layer. Uh, we'll go with red. So right about this area is going to be right around the elbow. Okay. Will it land on the elbow? It's going to land just in front of the elbow. Okay. And that's kind of why I left a lot of kind of open space here mm -hmm. uh, because this is where the actual elbow is going to be. So it's going to yeah. land just a little bit down and in front of the elbow. Um, and then, so you've got this big colorful jellyfish right smack dab in the outside of the lower arm, kind of curving around, arcing around. This is going to end up being pretty much smack dab in the middle of the forearm. Um, and then this is going to kind of wrap around the back of the forearm, along with a lot of this coral and the brain coral. I think I'm going to have like a, almost like a neon glow coming off of the brain coral. Yeah, that would help out a lot because then you could kind of separate some of the stuff, like the subject matter, you know what I mean? Right. I think it's a pretty good setup. I, I think it's really hard to see because it's like wrapping. You know what I mean? Right now it looks like, right now it looks like everything's kind of lined up at the top. Like the top of the, what I mean by that is like the top of the seahorse head and yeah. the top left corner of the jellyfish and then the Nautilus. But I think once it wraps, it'll make a lot more sense. And then plus we're, we're still not seeing like what else you're um, tying into either. You know what I mean? So that like, well, and that's that's part of the issue that I'm running into because the uh, the existing tattoo on her upper arm was started by another artist um, oh, yeah. that's you know very good they're you know extremely talented um, the problem is is that they got into a motorcycle accident Oof. lost basically function of their hand Oof. and um, is no longer tattooing they oh, found man. me and they wanted me to finish it up. So I finished it up. I added a small little piece to it, but uh, they wanted to extend that down and complete a lower arm sleeve, like complete mm -hmm. the full sleeve. So I might still do a little bit of tweaking of the design and just move the placement of the 
Seahorse might bring that down a little bit more just because I do agree with what you were saying, how it almost seems like it's too linear across the top. I think mm-hmm. if I brought the seahorse down a little bit more, um, I think that would really help vary everything. Now yeah. it might it might give me a little bit too much negative space up here, but I can always find mm-hmm. something like a little outline or silhouette of like a manta ray or something like that to throw in the background. Well, the problem know. is, is that on the upper arm, they already started a line of basically capping off the lower portion of the upper arm with different parts of coral. So it's not like I really have a whole lot of ambient or negative space room that I can play with. Can you use some of the main main subject matter and make part of it like um, silhouetted, so to speak? You know what I mean? Like the darker part of the shading against some of the existing color? Of, of like, like let's say the seahorse, the, like the top of the head would be darker, uh, blending down into like a light source that would be shining on from underneath it up. And then to Actually, the back I really of the like that. I really like yeah. that idea. Doing almost and, like a light source emanating from the, um, so if I did like. Cause then you can make the seahorse a little bit larger even, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause if and I used. Really- the brain coral as my primary light source, I could have light rays emanating out. This uh-huh. would still, the jellyfish would still be catching the ambient light uh-huh. coming from up above. And then that could give me some really cool color effects with like magenta and lime green. Oh, yeah. You know, exactly. in the seahorse itself. So having our brighter areas there you know, right, catching the bottom lips of a lot of the the texture on the seahorse mm-hmm. and a lot of the bottom spines. I'd even have some of the ambient glow from the brain coral coming around here, bouncing off the bottom of the chambered nautilus, right? And then some of these tentacles. And then just having a very faint kind of ambient... Um, like kind of tealish light tone coming down hitting the tops there you go that's exactly it yeah you know and then like in the water in the depths of the water you always see you know pinks as like these like you know different kinds of purples and stuff like that because it's a well, that's, more recess and, and so that's from the light exactly food. where i'm going to be going with the jellyfish itself because the jellyfish is going to be kind of removed from the light source of the brain coral that's mm-hmm. going to have a lot of very vibrant magentas, a lot of very vibrant pinks. So a lot of these areas are going to have that very nice, like super vibrant light magenta pinkish tones. You know, I'll even incorporate that into some of these areas. You know, maybe some of it coming down in this area with like some brighter pinks kind of coming down here for the scene metal for like the fan on the scene metal. Yeah. You know, to really help separate that out from the background, even though yeah. these guys are going to be in the foreground, uh-huh. I think I'm really going to put more of the emphasis on the mid ground, which is going to be the jellyfish itself. I would even start and I barely ever do this. And you guys have talked to me back into this but i would even go through and like color line that jellyfish too yeah today i think we're just going to basically do our our essential map which Mm -hmm. is going to involve just a few hard black lines and a ton of gray line oh yeah your bloodline yeah yeah just to like mark it down so that that way whenever she comes back in it's like cool what are we coloring in today yeah yeah Right. And you essentially turn them into a coloring book and it makes the whole process a lot easier. Right. You know, it makes it more budget friendly for them because you can be like, yeah, OK, cool. Let's knock out, you know, the Nautilus today and we'll we'll do that to completion. You know, if you're working right. with a smaller budget, if you're working with a bigger budget, cool, not a problem. We'll get the Nautilus done and maybe the seahorse done or maybe mm-hmm. we'll start just blocking in different values across the boards. Right. I like it. 
I like it a lot. You know, but it, it's one of those concepts where she came in and she's like, I want bright and colorful sea life. <laughs> well, sit down because I got you. Yeah. More or less. It's like, okay, I'll come up with something for you. Yeah, I always like that. And when they're like, so what do you think? I'm like, well, I, I have to think about this for a second. Give me a second. Let me let me come up with some some words that define meaning to us both and that I can describe it to you. Well, right I, now, I, showed thing- her, I showed her a couple of like random reference images um, when she came in the last time when I actually did a, <laughs> uh, a clam that. with a pearl and I tattooed that on the inside of her armpit. Oh, well, yeah, uh, you were talking about that the other day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Josh, I, your I, expression was priceless. Uh, I just saw you go from like, okay, okay, to, oh, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, no. That's a hard pass. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah, that, I was like, you, you want what, where? I'm sorry, what? Coming in. Uh, okay. Well, on that painful uh, note. I am yeah, out, she everybody. sat like a champ. She sat yeah. like a champ. You taking off, Josh? Yeah, I got to take off. I've got another meeting that started five-ish minutes ago. <laughs> okay, cool. <man. laughs> Have good a luck. great one, guys. Have Thank a good you. one, Thanks Josh. Take care. You too. Yeah, I think I think I'll be signing off here pretty soon too. Yep, same here, my friend. Same here. Why don't we go around the room and have everybody show what they're working on and, and give us a, a shout out about where you're coming from and how to get a hold of you. Maybe we can start with uh, Kyle. Sure. And I'll spotlight you, Kyle. Hold on. As far as I got so far on this guy. There you oh, go. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You have some things marked off. There were some percentages. Would you mind talking to us about that for a second? Oh, yeah. That was um, some critique that I got last night saying basically that, like, the bird was a bit too big. Um, the biggest thing that I kind of learned from that as well is just learning, like, look at it with, you know, like, cropping off where the arm would stop. Like, if you're looking at it like that, cut the design off there and see uh-huh. if it looks natural in the arm that way. That's uh, something that I learned last night. Nice. So I've been yeah. trying to implement that in this and just like really seeing what it would look like from this one perspective and then like kind of cut out all the parts that wrap around to see if it looks natural still. Gotcha. That's cool, man. Good advice. Yeah. That guy coming through. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely cool. something that you start to see in a lot of artists that really work large scale is you start to see them taking these single images, blowing them up super huge, Mm -hmm. and then cropping them out so that they fit, you know, whatever area of the body that they're going to be working on, you know, so that that way they can maximize the detail and maximize the real estate, you know, that they're working with. Right. And um, I always, I'm always personally way more attracted to images that are built in that way than you know images that are okay let me see if i can get this entire thing crammed even though it's like super detailed and it's super small let me see if i can get all of this information crammed into this way small area right it's like no 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 blow it up focus on the primary aspects of it and crop it down so that it fits yeah yeah, and just make sure a lot more room for detail as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always a good way to practice um, being, uh, what's the right way to sit with the client? Um, I don't know, not, not, not stern, Jason, adamant. You know what I mean? Adamant about things that are going to work and the ideas that they have and you want to try to include everything that they want and everything like that. But it's good to be adamant about like the actuality of it, like the, the, the application what it's generally going to look like if you do try to make everything, you know, uh, an inch by an inch with 30 different names inside of it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. It's um, it's good practice. It's a good example of how a cornucopia tattoo is not going to look good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cornucopia tattoos are no bueno. No bueno. 
Jason, how about you? You want to let us know how to get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, you can always find me on Instagram at Philly Inc. Um, I work at the Inkwell Tattoo in Southampton, Pennsylvania. Feel free to stop by, reach out to me if you want to get tattooed. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that. Even if you just want to say hi, shoot me a message. Um, you can also find me on email at Jason L Tattoos uh, at Gmail. Killer. Yeah. Jason, thank you again for all the help today, dude. You're a lifesaver. You're very welcome, my friend. Anytime. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and give a shout out here real quick. Um, my name is Ricardo Cervant. You guys can find me here every Tuesday morning uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or on Instagram under Ricardo Cervant. Um, feel free. Thank you guys. First of all, I've received several messages um, uh, asking for critiques and things like that. And I can um capable of being able to offer some good advice as far as your artwork goes and stuff like that so thank you so much for humbling me in that experience um it's a, an empowering thing for me so thank you um also <clears throat> for some reason i really want to put it out there today and say to you guys like these negative thoughts that you have sometimes these, these beat down moments these things that make you feel like you just aren't going to make it today or you're not gonna be able to come through with what it is that you're trying to accomplish today. Um, do yourself a favor and challenge yourself with something that can be beneficial. Wake up an hour earlier to work on something outside of your art project or outside of your tattoo project or outside of whatever it is you have going on. Wake up a little bit earlier, go for a walk, go do something, do something productive instead of like sitting there dwelling on the fact that you're not going to be able to accomplish something um, and see what it does for you. You know, write it down. Um, keep track of it. And I hope all of you guys have a good day today. Thank you for joining me and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very Peace. much.